this is Dr. Lewis doing another um, question on molecular orbital diagrams, the kind you might get in the exam assessment. Um, so remember you can do, it would either be a linear system such as the butadiene or the allyl system or it could be the slightly more trickier aromatic system or anti-aromatic system. Anyway, the continuously conjugated cyclic systems. And here is one of those. We've got a continuously conjugated cyclic system. So we can push the electrons around like that, like a benzene ring, but a four-membered ring. And remember, in order to create the molecular orbital diagram of the pi orbitals, we can use this really simple little trick, which Frost came up with in, I think, the 1940s, or it could be the 30s. You take the shape of the molecule and you must take the apex, the point, and put it at the bottom. That's the absolutely vital thing you've got to do. And put it inside the circle. Not very good. There we go. And so across the middle of the circle, we have a line which indicates that above it's antibonding and below it's bonding. And we have our energy levels or where these vertices are. So we know that's the picture of the molecular orbital diagram. What we don't have from that is the detail of what each molecular orbital looks like. But we can lay out our shapes again and put sort of the four squares on their apex in the same arrangement as up there. So we've got one at the bottom, one at the bottom, and then two at the same energy level and then one at the top and obviously energy is going up as we go up and it says label this the S homo in this case so we we can put a little line beside each one to put our electrons in if there are any to go in there Remember, as you go up, the number of nodes increases. So the lowest energy at the bottom has no nodes. So it'll be all bonding interactions. And the next one up will have one. And obviously there are two degenerate ones, each with one node. So we go zero node, one node, two nodes. So one can go through there, through the, the corners, if you like. And then, because there's a node, that must be opposite sign to that. And then the other one will go through a face. So we'll have bonding there, and the other pair also bonding, but opposite. To the ones we've just done. So the number of bonding, the total number of bonding or anti-bonding interactions should be the same. So there, opposite phase, but they're too far away to be bonding or anti-bonding. So there's no repulsion, if you like, between the electrons in those two positions. So that's non-bonding. Here we've got a bonding, a bonding, an anti-bonding, an anti-bonding. They all cancel each other out, so it's non-bonding. And then finally, we're going to have one which the two no the nodes, the two nodes, we've got zero node, one node, two nodes, that every orbital will have the opposite phase to the, the next one. So it's always going to be a symmetrical picture, whichever, however we do it. And that's right, yeah. So that's two nodes, zero node, one node, two nodes. Now, the number of pi orbitals um, is going to be 2 and 4, so we put 2 in the bottom one. And remember, when we've got two energy levels, orbitals of the same energy, we must fill them up singly first with paired spins. And that's why, although it's a non-bonding orbital, it's extremely unstable because we've generated a sort of di-radical. So what actually happens is we don't get this shape because it's so unstable, it distorts 
and we end up with a more of an oblong rectangular shape and even then it is extremely strained so you get a, a, an alkene essentially at both ends and these only been isolated in argon matrices at very low temperature when essentially they're, they're surrounded by inert material and not going to come into contact with anything else okay and then it says isolate label the SO so the SO is singly occupied higher molecular orbital so that's going to be the S homo okay that's it